I am optimistic about artificial intelligence in the long run. In the short run, not so much. I'm afraid a lot of companies have invested heavily into immature artificial intelligence, mostly large language models, that will not deliver a decent return on investment. And it looks like this bubble is about to burst. Today, I have a list of five bad omens. The first bad omen of an AI bubble bursting is multiple recent reports that companies realize their AI investments aren't paying off. The US Census Bureau has reported for the first time in two years that AI adoption has been going down among US companies. This follows briefly after a report from MIT's Project Nanda that looked at the implementation of generative AI and global business. They found that 95% of companies who've adopted the technology have seen no measurable return on investment. A recent report from McKinsey likewise found that 80% of companies have seen no positive impact of using Using AI. The business analyst firm Gartner has recently announced that we're officially past peak AI hype and in the trough of disillusionment. The second bad omen is that people are beginning to realize that even the best current use case for AI coding isn't living up to expectations. We talked about this already last year. Multiple studies have found that while AI produces a lot of code quickly, it also creates more mistakes and security problems that need to be fixed down the line. The newest study on the matter comes from Meta, the Model Evaluation and Threat Research Group, which found that large language models suck at completing long tasks and actually make developers slower. If you need any indication that AI coding isn't panning out, some software engineers are now specializing in vibe coding cleanup. This brings me to bad omen number three, which are signs that AI over investments are about to be corrected. Most of the AI investment that's driven positive stock trends has come from a few big firms like Google, Alphabet, Meta or Amazon. But as a recent report from Goldman Sachs highlights, these companies have tied up a lot of their money in AI, which can't continue. They predict that AI investments by these large companies are going to slow down significantly in the near future and expect that this reduction of investment will generally diminish optimism for AI, hence have a negative impact on the stock market. The fourth bad omen is public talk of an AI bubble and investor retreat. OpenAI CEO Sam Altman has recently acknowledged we're in an AI bubble. He said in an interview with The Verge, are we in a phase where investors as a whole are overexcited about AI? My opinion is yes. And that someone's gonna get burnt there, I think. Yes, who might that someone be? Certainly not those who have invested into Altman's company, which recently corrected its outlook and how much money they'll burn until 2029, up by 90 billion. Indeed, Goldman Sachs analyst Cash Rangan points out it's more of a problem in private markets than in public software names. By this, he means that big companies such as Google and Meta have invested heavily into AI for sure, but they've also diversified as we know that both have teams working on going beyond large language models. Then there is Martin F. Timofsky, a former Reserve Bank of Australia economist and AI researcher who just removed all AI investments from his pension fund. He cited concerns that many business leaders misunderstand real AI capabilities and that inflated expectations mimic past bubbles. F. Timofsky said, I don't think the majority of businesses understand how to employ AI and I don't think the majority of managers understand what it is. The business excitement around large language models is far greater than the actual usefulness. And my fifth and final bad omen is that AI is hitting a physical barrier, that is data center and energy supply shortages. In a recent report, Goldman Sachs finds that data center vacancy rates sit at a record low 3% and near 0% in the most sought after markets with new power at scale often not coming online until 2028 or beyond. This is bad because it'll drive up prices for model training so much so that many newcomers to AI will just be cut off from progress, further worsening the outlook. 
Personally, I think that these are temporary obstacles and that the impact in the next few years will be limited because if I can see that generative AI is the beginning and not the end, I'm pretty sure investors can see this too. But please don't take financial advice from German physicists. I've had bad experiences with that. Whether it's literature research, graphic design or tax forms, there's really no way around PDFs. I used to hate working with PDFs, but my life has become so much better since I've started using UPDF, who've been sponsoring this video. This app can really save you a lot of time with PDFs. You can edit text and images in documents directly, highlight and comment and convert PDFs to Word, PowerPoint, Excel or images. You can also merge or split files, compress them or encrypt them. And yes, it syncs across all your devices. Their AI assistant is where it gets really clever. You can chat with your PDFs, summarize long reports, compare several documents side by side or translate them. You can even automatically create mind maps. And they now have a brand new feature that's an AI paper search that finds credible references instantly. Perfect if you don't want to spend hours hunting citations. UPDF works on all platforms and comes at one-sixth the cost of Adobe. It's well worth it. And all you have to do is use the link in the description to download it now and make your PDF smarter today. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.